What's up guys, in this video I want to talk about bevels and clamp overlaps, the biggest issue that I see people run into, especially when they're first learning how to use booleans and bevels in hard surface modeling, okay? So check this out. What I want to do is start with a sphere because this will be a pretty nasty example, and then I'm going to run a cut inside the sphere. So minus a few shading issues around the edge, it looks okay. So what will happen if we run a bevel around this edge here? What I'm going to do is add in a bevel modifier. I'm going to set the segment count to 3. And then here you can adjust the, um, let me also turn on hard and normals here. And here you can adjust the amount, which is basically the size of the bevel. So 0 would mean no bevel, and anything above it would mean whatever size that is. But you're going to see, after a certain point, it just doesn't change. Nothing happens. The bevel doesn't really kick in. The reason this is occurring is because of this clamp overlap feature right here. Let's talk about it. Now I'm going to turn this off and you're just going to see we have a mess. So let's first of all understand exactly what clamp overlap is doing. So check this out. I have it turned off. Okay, I'm going to make this bevel really small. So basically what happens is as this bevel starts pushing out, it will begin to overlap with other nearby geometry. So for example, right here, Notice that right now we're okay, but this edge will eventually start to push over this edge and cause nasty shading artifacts, which we don't want. Now the clamp overlap feature prevents that. If you turn it on, it will only bevel up to the point where the artifacts occur. So it would basically only bevel, you know, I guess this is as far as it's going to bevel. So whatever the closest point is, once it hits that overlap point, clamp overlap kicks in and it doesn't bevel anymore. Now the issue with this is in situations like this, you don't really get a bevel at all. I mean, this is barely a bevel. What we want is something, you know, like this, where we have a much larger bevel that we can actually see. So how exactly can we use bevels and, you know, ignore the clamp overlap but still get good results? That's the tricky part. So let me show you a few different solutions here. So the first and most obvious one, I'll apply the Boolean for demonstration. The first and most obvious one would be to slide the geometry out of the way that's causing those overlaps. So for example, this vertex, I could slide. This one right here, I could merge, right? Let's see what else is close by. This one right here, I could probably merge as well. Same with this one. Maybe this one as well. And maybe this one I could connect here instead and then dissolve this one out. So what this is going to do is it's going to basically provide us with more buffers. So now if I turn the clamp overlap on, okay, we still have some issues, which means somewhere in here we're still getting an overlap point. So we got to figure out where exactly that is. Okay, I think it's right here actually. These are close by, so let's try that. Okay, cool. So clamp overlap, it's still kicking in. So obviously there's still a point in here where we're getting an overlap. So... I think it's right here. Sometimes you'll have duplicate vertices like this that you don't really notice, but now if I turn on the clamp overlap, you're going to see it's actually okay. And I actually have a lot more buffer for this bevel until it kicks in again because we moved the geometry out of the way. So that's solution number one. Now this can be a bit tedious, especially on curved surfaces like this, because having to slide a bunch of vertices, especially if the mesh is more dense, can be very inconvenient. There's another solution I want to show you using Mesh Machine, which is um, more of like a CAD-based solution, if I'm honest. It's pretty cool. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to undo all these changes I made. So basically what we want to happen, ideally, is as we bevel out, I'd rather it just eat up the geometry that's causing issues. You know, I don't want to have to deal with sliding the vertices around. I just want it to eat those vertices and ignore them. So this is a much more optimal solution. Let me show you what we can do. Um, so basically, if you have Mesh Machine, you can go in here. And this is a paid add-on, by the way, so don't be yelling at me when you don't see this in the add-ons panel. Um, we're going to go in here and make sure you have Experimental turned on to True, okay? So what you can actually do in this case, I'll apply the Boolean. And a control click around. Okay. And what we can do is we can use this offset cut feature. Now, what this will do, if I adjust the amount here, is it will eat the geometry as it goes through. Notice that the more I push this out, the more it eats up that geometry, which immediately gives us the buffer 
that we actually need for our bevel. So instead of having to, you know, slide vertices around and do all of that, I can basically give myself as much buffer as I need for the bevel. And now when I, you know, increase the bevel here, let's go in, you're going to see I can bevel basically up until that point because I just added in a buffer. So pretty useful solution. Now another solution which doesn't require any sort of topology changes at all would be to use the bevel shader. And let me show you that solution. So... Okay, so obviously we can't really bevel too far without getting artifacts, so you could use the last two solutions I showed you, or what you could do is you could use a bevel shader. So you would basically go into the shader editor, okay, you would go to input, bevel, and then you would just connect this up to this, and then just go into um, cycles, I think it only works in cycles, so you go in here, let that load in. Make sure you disable the bevel modifier. If you're using a bevel shader, you do not want to use a bevel modifier, okay? So now what's going to happen is it's going to simulate a bevel procedurally. It doesn't, you know, worry about the topology. The topology doesn't even matter here. And if I adjust the radius, I can go from a perfectly hard edge at zero to something a bit more, you know, rounded out using this procedural trick. The only downside with the solution is that hard edge you can still kind of see it as it uses these shadow effects to cause the bevels. So you can tell it looks like there's a bevel there, but if you zoom in closely, you'll still kind of see that hard edge line, but that's kind of the nature of this procedural trick. But it's pretty cool because if you have like a super dense mesh and the bevel modifier just isn't cutting it for you, what you can actually do is simply use the bevel shader here and you can make this big, you can make it small, and it's not going to worry about the topology at all. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did. And you're going to see no change to the topology. It's purely procedural. Really cool. So clamp overlap is great for diagnosing issues because you can turn it off and on and kind of see if you're getting a, an overlap somewhere. It'll immediately tell you because the bevel will get smaller. But I never keep clamp overlap turned on just for the sake of shading. What I always do is use it to diagnose issues. I'll turn it on and then I'll turn it off, and then I'll use one of the solutions I showed you in this video, depending on what I'm doing, to fix those shading artifacts. I can't tell you which solution is better because it depends on what you're doing. If you're just going for a cool looking render, you know, the bevel shader might be good, or maybe just cleaning up the artifacts real quick might be good. You might not even need to clean up the artifacts at all if you can't see them. But if you're exporting this to another software like Substance Painter or Marmoset, for example, you definitely want to get those artifacts cleaned up because they won't display properly in those engines. So those are the three main ways you can deal with clamp overlap issues and bevels. Hopefully they helped. Hopefully you can use one of them in your next project. You know, I think topology issues are the things that most beginners and even intermediates struggle with. Not that it's difficult. They just don't exactly know what's happening. So you want to know what's happening behind the scenes so that way you can actually diagnose and fix issues when they arrive. So for that reason, I would definitely also recommend picking up our topology handbook on our site. It's totally free. Um, it discusses a lot more, you know, issues like this in more detail. And it should kind of give you an idea of common problems you'll run into and also how you can fix them. So make sure you pick that up. It's a series of videos. It's totally free on our website. There's a link in the top of the description. I think you'll really enjoy that resource as well. So thanks a bunch for watching. Hope this video helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.